is a CBS News political contributor, chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine. Good enough to join me now from Washington. And Mark, I want to get your uh, reaction there to what we just heard. And beginning with those rather glowing comments, Mr. Trump once again offered up for President Obama. Yeah, I mean, he has been pretty consistent in his praise of President Obama since that day they had the, um, their first you know, meeting in the Oval Office that went up lasting 90 minutes a few days after the election. I, I would obviously love to have been a fly on the wall for any of these conversations. The dynamic is obviously fascinating. Um, I, I think Donald Trump is uh, probably very smart to be using him as he is, and I think President Obama has a genuine interest in his legacy being preserved as fully as possible, and in so much as he can influence Donald Trump for that, um, you know, it's obviously an important part of it. But no, I mean, this is, they're very, part of a very, very small club. I'm sure President Obama reminded him of that very, very early on. And obviously the history they have leading up to this was pretty checkered. I mean, it was pretty one way. Donald Trump, um, you know, obviously spent a lot of time trying to uh, illegitimize you know, Barack Obama's presidency by saying he might not have been born in the United States. Barack Obama obviously roasted him pretty uh, memorably at the White House Correspondents' Dinner in 2011. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a whole new st stage of the game. On the topic of Secretary of State, meanwhile, Mark, it, Mr. Trump seemed to say a lot without actually saying anything at all. He said some names have been crossed off the list. When asked if Mitt Romney's was one of them, he demurred, said no, he is still being considered. He also actually added Rex Tillerson's name, the CEO of Exxon Mobil, to it. What then to make of what we know and don't? Well, I mean, the Secretary of State um, sort of choice and the sort of ongoing beauty contest around it has been, I mean, almost this, this I mean, now two, three week running reality show within the reality show that's been the Trump transition. Um, I mean, people have been pretty unshy about voicing their, their willingness to take the job, to want to sort of parade before Donald Trump, have dinner with him in Mitt Romney's case, you know, sort of be seen. And um, it's been a very public process. My sense is that this is what Donald Trump likes. This is what he thinks is um, interesting to people, and it is. Um, I, I think the strategic advantage for him is that it has actually taken up so much attention, it has probably taken uh, some of the spotlight off some of the more controversial appointments, some of the bigger fights he's going to have to have, whether it's around Jeff Sessions being nominated for Attorney General, um, you know, maybe you know, Michael Flynn as his National Security Advisor, a very, very controversial pick from the beginning. So, you know, in the sense that it's keeping people interested, it's also, it's obviously very, um, it's flattering to Donald Trump. I mean, these are people, many of whom who have been very critical of him in the past, and yet they are sort of seen to be submitting before him and praising him. And Donald Trump, I think, obviously likes this, and it's something that he values. Uh, he also attacked uh, Boeing and really picked a fight there. He did it with a tweet. And in fact, the president-elect was also asked about his social media habits, and uh, this is what he had to say about them. Is this proving to be a habit that you're finding a difficult time breaking? No, I think I am very restrained, and I talk about important things. And frankly, it's a modern-day form of communication. Between Even when you're picking Facebook, fights with Matt, it? Between Facebook and Twitter, I have, I guess, more than 40 million people. And that's a modern-day form of communication. I get it out much faster than a press release. I get it out much more honestly than dealing with dishonest reporters. On that... You know, it was interesting, Mark. I saw that uh, Ari Fleischer, uh, f former, uh, uh, of course, a member of uh, the Bush administration, actually tweeted following this interview. He said, you know, it's interesting when people ask Donald Trump about his use of Twitter. I wonder if FDR was ever asked on the stump about his use of the radio. What do you make of that comparison? Um, well, I mean... <laughs> The, the radio is a little bit more of a reflective medium. I, I can guarantee you that FDR, FDR was not asked about his Twitter use. That, that seems like <laughs> nev it never happened. But, no, I mean, it, it is, I mean, I do think that Donald Trump has a legitimate point. It is a very new form of communication. It has been very effective for him. It is something that eliminates a great many middlemen, whether it's the White House press apparatus or the political press apparatus or the many layers of superego that have sort of clogged up um, our political discourse over the years. I mean, it does, for better or for worse, cut through a lot of the noise, and it gets people to see quite directly what this president-elect and what this figure is thinking. Um, you know, you could argue that it could be enabling a kind of recklessness and impulsiveness that could get him and could get the country in trouble. But I, I think, you know, he would probably say it's worked for him to this point. It saves a great deal of energy and money. Uh, you don't have to, like, you know, 
uh, what, focus group, any number of decisions. You just sort of say it. And that was sort of the style that got him elected president. And uh, has certainly marked his time as president-elect. Mark Leibovich, as always, we do appreciate the time. Thank you, Josh. Always fun.